Selling your house is one of the most stressful things you can do. And in today's tricky market, it's got a whole lot harder. We're on a mission to turn unsellable houses into unstoppable sellers. I'm going to get the best out of the houses. While I get the best out of the estate agents. Together, we're going to show you the tricks of the trade to make an unsellable house sellable. Coming up on today's programme, I'm really put to the test by a single mum's student dig. Come on, when you're trying to sell your house, don't you think you should paint over the graffiti on the back of doors? And I make an agent face up to his client. It went on for such a long period of time that I, d you know, I lost definitely lost sales. Historic Dunstable is home to today's unsellable. It's a three-bed detached house with a large garden, off-street parking, and separate sitting and dining rooms. It first went on sale two years ago at £250,000, but due to the troubled market and a run of bad luck, the price has fallen to £220,000. There have been over 20 viewings and two sales have fallen through. Something's obviously going badly wrong here. But I have not been beaten by a house yet, so I'm going to go inside and take a look. And I've never given up on a sale, so I'm off to tackle the agent and find out what makes Dunstable tick. Meet Jackie Cooper and her kids, Stephanie and Stephen. Full-time PA Jackie moved into this three-bed house nine years ago with her young family. But after six years, Jackie and her husband split up, and then the kids turned into teens. Now Jackie's struggling to keep her house in order and make ends meet. Well, it's basically, it's one wage coming in, which is my wage. It's hard work, it's, you know, it's tight. The bills come first, you know. They've all got to be paid first. Because the one thing I'm not getting is in debt. Jackie wants to ease the financial pressures and treat herself and her kids to some of life's little luxuries. Things have to be saved up for. It's not a case of just popping down the shops and knowing you can buy it because you can't. But the slowdown in the property market has seen her home go stale. After two years on the market, countless viewings and two sales falling through, Jackie feels her luck is dwindling as quickly as her bank balance. I can't... Realistically, I can't afford to drop the price any further because then that jeopardises me buying another house. I won't have the equity that I need to put into another house, so it, I would be going round in a big circle. So, are Jackie's property woes down to plain old bad luck? Time to see for myself. Wow, that is a busy carpet. Kind of looks like carpet you find in a pub, which I'm not sure is that appealing. And when I say pub carpet, I mean dirty boozer circa 1980. And the carpet's not the only thing that's showing its age. It's a shame about the sofa, because this is a really nice size room, but this sofa just cuts it off in the middle, leaving you with two small rooms. Not ideal. From my time as an agent, I know buyers often make up their minds in the first 60 seconds. And after 60 seconds in this house, I either want to order a gin and tonic or head for the door. Oh, dear. This room has a really unloved feel. I mean, maybe it's the wire coming from the ceiling, the plaster showing through, straw hat. I mean, I can see why buyers have put off at this stage. And the fact is, they make their decisions so quickly. A lot of people, you've lost them by the time you get to here. So far, this house is a catalogue of errors. And the further in you go, the worse it gets. Oh, got a bit of a problem here. I'm not a fan of this bright, bright blue kind of beach hut theme. I think it's a bit incongruous. It doesn't really go with the rest of the house. And it's in not a great state of repair. I do love the seaside, but this room gives me a sinking feeling, and there is worse to come. Wow, bit of an aquatic theme in here. Dolphin border. Underwater themes leave me underwhelmed, but not as much as this. <laughs> oh. 
come on. When you're trying to sell your house, don't you think you should paint over the graffiti on the back of doors? Jess Was Ear 2007 is not what potential buyers are looking for. A graffiti wall may be cool if you're 17, but no 17-year-old is going to buy this house. Jess Was Ear has to go. A three-bed detached house seeks new owner. Must like dolphins, pub carpets, unfinished DIY and graffiti. Small cosmetic details, but put them all together and no wonder this house is unsellable. Before I meet Jackie's estate agent, I'm checking out what Dunstable's got going for it. After 20 years buying and selling, I know location is key. And this area is not a hard sell. A peaceful market town with proximity to London and the downs on your doorstep. Good location or not, in today's tough market, it's not just agents who have to lift their game. Your property's presentation must stack up against the competition. Time to tell Jackie some home truths. First thing I noticed when I walked in the sitting room was the carpet. Yes, well, that's uh, <laughs> not the nicest. No, it's not. I never sold a pub when I was an agent, but I know this carpet is a real turn-off for buyers. And speaking of turn-offs... Now, Jackie, bathrooms are pretty important when you're selling your house. OK. People look at that and think to themselves, are we going to have to remove the loo and the sink yep. to, to redo it? And it becomes more of an issue than it really is. I do try and stand in front of it when I show people. <laughs> what do you mean? You're like, hello, yeah. welcome to my bathroom. <laughs> nice try, Jackie, but you can't hide anything from buyers, especially not this. First things first, Jackie. I know. She hid it. <laughs> so she had a sleepover. Yes. And everyone graffitied their name. Yeah, and I think it's been added to a little bit more. Yes. The writing is on the wall. This house needs help. This is a really nice sized room and yes. it's, it's a really big second bedroom. But the only thing I would say at the moment is I think the four poster bed, because it's, it's sort of at almost an eye line, it takes up quite a lot of your of the space in the room. Uh -huh. And I think it makes the room look slightly smaller than it actually is. Right. Is Steph very attached to it? Um, yeah, that's a yes. It is, because <laughs> it's something she always wanted was four poster beds. Yeah. Um, so I think I got her that probably about six months ago. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Things could get tricky, but this room needs to grow up. I'm on my way to meet Jackie's agent, but before I do, I want to build my case. Time for some market research. Why would I buy a house in Dunstable? Well, it's, it's really nice. It's new to London, but you've got the Downs, you've got lovely countryside all around. Cost of housing. Yeah. Nice place to live. Yeah. Crime rate's pretty low. Brilliant. Um, it's just a nice area. It's a nice atmosphere, quite a nice nightlife as well. We've got yeah. the theatre as well, which is just opened. Okay. We've got the downs and all that, and yeah. go down, I'll go down to the downs most most days and that with her. 40 minutes by train to London, easy access to Luton Airport, plus the downs are a big attraction. Things are looking up for Dunstable. I've lived here for over 30 years. I came from London and I love it. I wouldn't go anywhere else. Well, now I've heard it firsthand. Dunstable's got loads going for it. If Jackie can make a feature of all this, she's got a much better chance of hooking a buyer. There's a lot to be done before this house is ready for viewings. First things first, it's time to lose the junk. Jackie, if you take that. Thank you. Decluttering is an essential step when selling your home. Even if you can't see the mess, buyers can. Be ruthless. Remember, it's not forever. Investing in storage until you sell will pay off in the end. At last, the junk is out. Finally, I can see this property's potential and get cracking on my plan to turn it from a seller's woe into a buyer's dream. I've had a good look around the neighbourhood and there's still hope for Jackie. 
Although today's market is keeping agents on their toes, houses are still selling in and around Dunstable. Three bedroomed house, landscape garden, off street parking, on the market one month, sold for £242,000. Three bed semi, separate lounge and dining room, conservatory, on sale eight weeks, sold for £220,000. Semi detached, three bedrooms, 150 foot garden, immaculate interior, sold for £220,000. It's not easy turning unsellable around, but things are starting to happen. The clutter's gone and the pub carpets are finally off to meet their maker. This carpet has a one-way ticket to the dump. Replacing flooring doesn't have to cost a bomb and can mean the difference between making a sale or not. We've decluttered the house and now we have a blank canvas to work with. I want to give Stephanie's room a grown-up makeover and that means getting rid of the graffiti and the dolphin. In the bathroom, it is time to lose the beach hut theme. And finally, the sitting and dining rooms, I'm going for a whole new look. First, we're tackling the tatty walls. Colour can add character, but this time we're sticking to neutrals to make the most of the space. On the floor, we're going for teen-proof wood laminate to help busy mum Jackie. And finally, we're putting the furniture back in, but reducing the headcount making the most of the open-planned layout so buyers can see the true potential of these rooms. It's time to tackle the agent. Estate agent Darren has been personally handling Jackie's property for two years. Now, that's long-term commitment, but in that time, Jackie's lost two sales and a further two offers have fallen through. Is this down to bad luck, bad management, or could the vendor be the one at fault here? So, Darren, just imagine that I'm a, I'm a buyer. Can you tell me about Jackie's property? Um, it's been on the market for well over a year now. How, how many viewings have we had over there? We have had 37 viewings. So we've had a lot of viewings there, um, but no result. What's, what's the reason for the disappointing hit rate? We had a buy within a few days. Uh, unfortunately, they had, they had a property to sell. Since then, we've had several sales that have fallen through, and... Um, Unfortunately, most of them have fallen through because people are unable to get mortgages. Um, what worries me during the offers, I mean, how long has the house effectively been off the market during those periods? Um, about, I'd say, about six months right. in total. Six months off the market is a mistake. We've missed out on valuable marketing time. But if Darren's learned his lesson, he could still be our man. I mean, I know from my experience, it's not that uncommon to keep showing the house and say, mm. well, just, you know, we'll just... You know, it's, it's under offer, but, you know, the market is so quiet at the moment, I think you've got to do that just to if keep we, things bubbling. If we were to resell that property, I would continue marketing it. Right. So, you know, if it did happen again, we would still continue marketing it. All right, well, that's fantastic. So, I mean, you know, I hope we're in a situation where, you know, we get offers quickly. So do I. Darren is open to change, which is great, and I'm starting to suspect that the problems aren't all down to him. Could Jackie be hindering her own sale? So what could Jackie be doing to make things easier for you to help the sale move along? In recent months, she's not been that interested. Um, we've chased right. her. We've chased her on many occasions with specific offers, and one, one particular chap who's been quite, quite persistent with his offers. He started off lower than he is, and he's to a level now where he won't go any higher. Yeah. But she was um, not even returning our calls. You know, he was got to a stage where the buyer actually said, "Shall I go around there and see her?" Um, and I said, "No." Because you're not, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, and um, we, we're the ones that deal with all, all the offers. We don't want the embarrassment of her trying to negotiate on her doorstep. Hang on, this is news to me. How can Darren help Jackie sell if she won't even return his calls? Sounds like we have a problem with our vendor. So is it fair to say Jackie's actually lost heart in the property and in the sale? Yeah, she, as time has gone on, yeah. you know, she has lost interest. Obviously, we haven't, because at yeah. the end of the day, we don't get a penny from her until she moves. Darren may have made some mistakes, but I believe he's learned his lesson. In fact, it sounds to me like it's Jackie who needs to take some responsibility. When selling your property, it's not just the agent who needs to stay on the case. Remember, it's your home and your money. And here's how you can make sure they're in safe hands. 
What are the things that made you fall in love with your property in the first place? And is your estate agent using those in the marketing strategy? An agent may be saying the things they think buyers want to hear, but remember, nobody can know your home like you do. Estate agents get a terrible press for making loads of money for doing very little work. But remember, it takes two to make a sale. So ask yourself, are you doing all you can to help the agent? Is the house always tidy? Do you return their calls? You've got to do everything you can to get your home sold. Make sure both you and your agent are on top of the legals. If your property's been on the market for some time, you may not need a HIP, but you will need an energy performance certificate. Now, that's going to take time, and it will cost you around £100. But without it, your agent can't legally market the property. So make sure you're on top of everything. When we first met single mum Jackie Cooper, she was drowning in bills and struggling with an unsellable property she couldn't afford to maintain. Basically, it's one wage coming in, which is my wage. It's hard work, it's, you know, it's tight. She'd lost two sales in two years, and her property had gone cold. Then the unsellables team moved in. John discovered Jackie could be her own worst enemy. So what could Jackie be doing to make things easier for you to help the sale move along? And Sophie got stuck into the interior. Jackie, if you take that. Thank you. We've decluttered, we've depuffed, and finally DIY'd. Now it's time to make this house grow up once and for all. Is it art or graffiti? In this case, definitely graffiti, and it's time it went. I'm no artist, but I know how to sell a house. Looks like you could actually just wash it off. When doing up a house to sell, remember, always consult the manual first. And failing that, when painting, have a plan. Bedrooms should be a place of relaxation, so go for a calming colour like green. New flooring makes rooms feel bigger and cleaner, and in the bathroom can really lift a tired suite. Finishing off odd jobs is essential, and it could mean the difference between for sale and sold. With the house looking better by the minute, there's one more issue for me to tackle. Jackie's relationship with estate agent Darren is in trouble. I've been in the property business over 20 years, and even though things are tough at the moment, I still know a few things about how to get houses moving. A few major blunders have brought this sale crashing to a halt. And having heard complaints from both sides, I now want to get to the bottom of whether Jackie is part of our problem. There's been a bit of an issue with viewings, um, that sometimes phone calls not, in re not getting returned and things like that. As far as I know, I've always been around for viewings. It's mainly been um, on recent months, uh, more than the whole duration of the marketing. Yeah. In today's market, it's easy to lose hope. And, in this case, I suspect Jackie has. Darren's perception, certainly, is that you kind of lost into you, your, your fire for selling the house th a little bit. I think, well, yeah, I suppose, in a way, I have. I mean, are there things that you wish that you, you wish he'd done differently? My one big regret was taking it off the market when I had those two sales, letting the people, basically, mess me around for the amount of time they did. Yeah. So one minute they've got the mortgage, one minute they haven't, and it went on for such a long period of time that, I, d you know, I lost, definitely lost sales through it. Yeah. We've learned a big lesson uh, on this one, um, especially in the day Jackie's incurred costs, we've incurred considerable costs too, yeah. and uh, the last thing we want is for a sale to fall through. Darren's come a long way. But if we're going to make this sale, we need Jackie to be on board. What can you do about making sure that there will be somebody there to do viewings? Can you leave keys with somebody else? Um, like Darren can always have a key. That's that's not a problem. Have um, you not got a key? No. No. So are you doing most of the viewings yourself? I've done quite a few. It may sound harsh, but in my book, vendors should be kept away from viewings. Will Jackie see sense? I think it can make people feel a bit uncomfortable. I'd give Darren a set of keys. Yeah, well, I haven't, yeah. I haven't got a problem with that. Yeah. Oh, well, that, if that's, that's good. If that's we can be arranged, that'd be fantastic. A long relationship. <laughs> a tough conversation, but one that I believe will pay off in the end. Jackie and Darren have finally been open with each other. Now, all we need is some viewers. With the relaunch imminent, 
and Agent Darren drumming up new interest in Jackie's home, the pressure's on to make it appeal to buyers. It's been tough, but thanks to a focused design plan and some serious elbow grease, we've made a big impact on a small budget. This bathroom looks a whole lot better. Before, it was a bit like a down at heel beach hut, but now it looks much brighter and bigger. So while Jackie takes the kids for a break away from the house, it's time to add those all-important finishing touches and make their home sellable. Colourful accessories are a great way to brighten up a room. Three days ago, Jackie Cooper's house was an unsellable disaster zone. Dated decor and teenage mess filled every room, making it feel more like student digs than a family home. It was unfinished, unkempt and unloved. And after two years on the market, it was in need of some serious TLC. But now things are looking a whole lot brighter. The living room, once overwhelmed by battered furniture, and let's face it, that awful carpet has been transformed. We've opened up and neutralized the space. The addition of new accessories has breathed life into the old furniture without breaking the budget. New wood floors make the space seem larger and create a flow through to the dining room. This room was being used for storage. Jumble sale junk and DIY disasters added to the catalog of errors. Now it's a chic dining area. With the junk out the way, buyers will finally see the size of the space. Upstairs, the bathroom was looking worse for wear. That's all changed. We've given it a good scrub, finished off the odd jobs and turned it into a tranquil space that buyers will love. The bedroom was dwarfed by an oversized bed and drowning in dolphin decor. It was also sporting some very unattractive teenage art, but not anymore. It's now a grown-up, peaceful room. The clutter's gone and the graffiti has been replaced by a modern silver mural. Finally, the Cooper's home has been made sellable. But what will Jackie and the kids think of the transformation? Come on in, the suspense is over. What do you think? Oh, my God. <laughs> Looks huge. You're pleased? Yeah. Oh, look, my carpet's gone. I know. <laughs> yeah, the best thing about this floor is it goes all the way to the edge of the room. There's not big chunks of cement. <laughs> it just doesn't look like my living room. It just looks so much better. Oh, well. <laughs> come on in, come on in. So, what does it look like before? Um, it wasn't this. <laughs> no. I want a bath now. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> I would never have painted it cream. It just wouldn't have been a colour, but mm. it looks lovely. Come, come this way. OK, Stephanie. Dun, dun, dun. Come on in. Oh, wow. Now, first things first, look at the back of the door. It's graffiti free. And that is where it's going to stay. The four poster bed, it is, a sh it is a sadness, but I think it does make the room look bigger. Yeah, it does. And look, there's what, what do you notice is missing from this room? The dolphins. Yes. <laughs> the dolphins are finally gone. So what do, you, what do you like about it, Stephanie? Everything. Everything? Yeah. Mum? She doesn't know it yet, but we're swapping rooms. <laughs> <laughs> that would be I'm, so... I'm having this. <laughs> While they may have to draw straws for the new bedroom, the Coopers seem happy. Their home is officially sellable. Now it's up to Darren to sell, sell, sell. Will the transformation help him make that sale? When people go into someone's home, they want to imagine themselves living there. And before, they didn't. But depersonalising it, clearing a lot of the way the debris, opened up the space, um, has made it a lot better. Time to put Darren to the real test. Can he sell with conviction? Well, right, would you like to come through to the lounge? What's been done in here is um, it's de they've depersonalised it. They've opened up a space that was uh, previously occupied with lots of furniture, redecorated, put new flooring down, opened up the bay, moved the, moved the curtains back. It's, it's nice and fresh. 
Yeah, I like the, the dining area is a nice, nice, decent sized dining area. The first viewing is underway and Darren is doing well. The declutter's worked. Viewers can finally see the size and potential of this room. And with the second viewing, things look even more promising. Yeah, no, I like the I like the uh, colours that go well with the, the yeah, mural on the on the wall. There, that's mm. really nice. Yeah. Our work on this house has clearly paid off. Come through to the lounge diner. Viewing number three. But can the target market Very imagine nice. living here? I love it because you can have the whole family, you know, for Christmas and uh, you know. Because we've got as well, you know, young kids and they can watch TV while we, we're dining here, so it's very good. Let's hope the rest of the house gets as good a reception. This is the second bedroom, so there is one bigger than this. It's uh, nice and uh, young. Yeah. You've got uh, plenty room. OK. Yeah, that's very nice good. indeed. We've created some real selling features. But what's the verdict? It feels quite modern inside and it's nice and livable. You could make this quite a nice home, you know, comfortable home to live in. Um, and uh, you could be quite happy here. Well, the new interior went down well, so fingers crossed the offers are going to come flooding in. And now we've finally got the marketing nailed as well. Hopefully Jackie and the kids can finally start planning the life they've been dreaming about. When we first met the Coopers, their teenage digs were a real turn-off. It's been a month since we stepped in, and in that time there's been some real progress. Estate agent Darren is back on the sales trail. And Jackie is also keeping up her end. Plus, the house has had some really positive reviews. No sale yet, but I have faith that Darren will reel in more viewers and an eventual offer. <laughs>